I had this gun and it, there was one in the chamber and I turned the safety off and put it inside of my mouth. What's going on everyone? Welcome to another video. Now we've got you, we've got the Instafam here on the live chat in front here, but I wanted to show you what I made. Now check out this. I made an omelette here with the follow your heart vegan egg. Now all I did was follow the directions, which is like add 115 mils of water to 10 grams of this. And I just, I just used the whole thing. So I just used about a, a liter or 1200 mils of water. And look what I made here. Now this is a stack of chocolate pancakes and I put, this is just peanut butter powder that I've mixed with water and a little bit of low calorie chocolate sauce, blueberries, bananas. Now I want you to try to guess how many calories this is. This is only 690 calories. I'll probably flash up um, the macros on screen too if you're training um, and you want to know that type of thing. But yeah, macro friendly. That's just something that you say when you're lifting weights. I don't even know what it means. Mm, that is... Sorry guys, I'll give YouTube a little glimpse of that as well. Look at that. That's just an omelette. All I did is literally followed the instructions, chucked a few veggies in a pan, cooked them up and then, chuck, and then poured this over it. But I only poured half of it over it. The other half I kept in the in the um bowl, right? So I poured half into the omelette, let that cook. Put a little bit of cheese powder on here. I got this vegan cheese powder. I'll go grab it for you so you can see. But anyway, the other half I left in the bowl. I put some stevia and some cocoa powder for the pancakes, and I put a little bit of I put actually um, seventy grams of wholemeal flour just so it come together like a pancake batter. Fantastic. Cheese sauce flavor mix. Have you seen that one before? We're moving on to the beast now. Oh my God. Wait till you see this. Look. Oh my God. Look everyone. <laughs> Sorry. Check out the pancake stack. OCD and intrusive thoughts, mental health. Um, OCD and intrusive thoughts. When it comes to something specific like that, I cannot give you specific advice. Um, I don't think it would be responsible for me to talk to you about something that I rich, li really don't have anything uh, knowledge on. I can help with certain mental health issues. Like, look, I can give you some general advice for mental health that will help you. But when it comes to something specific and serious, intrusive thoughts and OCD, uh, you'd need to talk to a proper therapist, like a professional. And don't be ashamed of that either. Like, I have a therapist and she I love her. I love her so much. She's beautiful. She's a beautiful angel. She helps me a lot. Um, and that's because of my crazy past. If your mind is, is not at rest and there's some thoughts coming in that are really, um, what are they, just repetitive annoying, random. A good way to get in control of your mind is to have a very good outlet. So like, I mean, ex really, really high intense exercise. Something that you can do for half an hour that's just gonna make you go, oh my God. Oh, I'm so sw I'm sweating and your brain's just like, oh. that's gonna calm everything down. You're gonna be more in control, less anxious. Also, I know you're gonna hate this because I hate to hear this, but meditation. And it's not as hard as what you think. Uh, you might, you might, you might meditate, or you might not. But meditation is just like there's an app called Headspace. It tells you when to do it. You just ten minutes a day. It's guided, um, and then you build your your way up. A healthy lifestyle is going to help you have a healthy mind. Um, I'm not saying that it's going to treat the underlying cause of your mental health issues, but I'm, I am definitely saying it's going to help mitigate symptoms and put you in a a healthier mental space because you're physical space is going to complement that. So if you're getting lots of sunshine, healthy foods, fruits, vegetables, lots of starches, carbohydrates for your mind, um, making sure you're, if you've got mental health issues, caffeine, get off the caffeine, I'm telling you. That's not gonna help you if you've got anxiety, depression, shit like that. Oh, mm, depression, look, I'm gonna say for, for anxiety, no. I, 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 I'd say stay, stay away from caffeine. So make sure you're getting enough sleep. All of these things, sleep, enough water, really good exercise, enough nature. Is you, do, Are you in a supportive environment or are you in a shithole environment? So make sure you're in a supportive environment with supportive people 
uh, focusing on a purpose every single day. I like to uh, dedicate my life to giving back, a life of service. So life of service to those who are vulnerable. I mean, you might want to get into some type of life of service. It's going to give you a sense of purpose and that's going to help you feel fulfilled. It's going to give you a greater sense of well-being. Um, all of these things, are you, are you making sure you're looking after all of those things? Because until you are, right, until you're looking after all of these baseline fundamentals, then you wonder, like, look, if everything's out of balance, of course your brain's going to be out of balance. You're going to have a, a you know, when I was on drugs, amphetamines, I, I used to have repetitive thoughts about, I, I would fabricate scenarios in my mind through paranoia. Like, I literally was like, you know, this is definitely happening. And then, then I'd be like, boom, boom, boom. Like, it was like ruminating and creating and using my paranoia to, to fabricate the scenarios that were just like, as soon as I was sober, I was just like, what the hell was I thinking? Like, you know, it's not rational. These things are not rational. But sobriety, uh, sleep, exercise, really clean, healthy fruits and, you know, whole food carbohydrates, nature, supportive environment, really uh, meditation, really f those things, they're going to lessen your symptoms a lot. And if you get a specific type of therapist who is uh, really wised up, studied, let's just say they've, they've got 30, looked at 30 years of research and got 30 years worth of experience treating people with OCD and obsessive thoughts, it, or whatever yours is, depression, anxiety, whatever it might be, they're going to know a lot more than you do, they're going to learn, know a lot more than I do, and they're going to know a lot more than your supportive friends are, because supportive friends are supportive friends, but they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to deep-seated psychological issues. Therapists do. They've done the training. They've gone to school. They've done all, all, this, all of this education, and they've got experience with patient after patient after patient after patient, okay? That's why it's good to see a therapist. Not because, oh my God, I need therapy, I'm crazy. No, no, I think like everyone's got some type of childhood trauma, something traumatic that happened to them, and they are, their day-to-day -day actions in their life are being subconsciously controlled by the trauma in, from their past. You know, the way that they deal with certain environments and the way they deal with in their relationships. And I can tell you right now, I know. I know from experience how much trauma can affect your day-to-day -day, you know, relationships in your life and the way that you react to certain situations. Now, that I, I make sure that I exercise every single day. I get out on the bike now, I go to the gym. Uh, wherever, I, when I was on tour, I was making sure I was doing exercise. Um, I make sure I'm getting sleep, eight hours. Try to get eight hours, six, okay, seven better, eight hours, ideal. If I'm going too heavy on the caffeine, I pull back a little bit, but I like having a coffee, I just, I like it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I like it. If I was getting really major anxiety and flashbacks and ruminating and, you know, triggers, I would lay off the caffeine. Um, get the fundamentals right, okay? And I'm not saying it's gonna cure your, your mental health. I'm not a doctor, okay? I'm not a doctor, I'm not saying I know that your particular, I know people have got that severe mental health issues that doing all of those things doesn't help it. Oh, well, doing all of those things won't cure it. I'm sorry, cure it. It will help mitigate the symptoms of it, Okay, 100%, but you're not gonna cure the root cause of it with lifestyle changes. You, you're gonna have to do a bunch of lifestyle changes and work. You have to do work for mental health. Um, and people don't like the idea of having to do work to sort out their mental health issues, but you're gonna have to. You're going to have to do some therapy. Supportive environment. Supportive people around you. Are you hanging around assholes? Because I'm telling you right now, that's going to affect your mental health. And that ain't even, that ain't even you. That's just hanging around a bunch of assholes. What's social media environment like? Is it toxic? Are you letting things get to you? Are you absorbing all the toxicity? Like, um, I don't claim to be a super professional at this, but all I know is there's some simple things that you could be doing to mitigate the symptoms. Now, medication. When it comes to medication. I'm not an expert there, but all I know is I've tried medication and it messed me up more. Um, anti-anxiety, antidepressants I was on, antipsychotics I was on, it turned me into a zombie. You can't get off of them without, you know, you have to slowly, slowly, gradually get off of them over the course of months. Um, it may, it imbalanced my mental state. Am I saying medication is never an option? Of course not, I'm not a doctor. Um, I just think that before you, 
start using medication, you better think very carefully about that and you better um, not just take that lightly because that's something that's going to be a part of your life for a long time and it's they're hard to get off of and they can cause some serious imbalance in your the chemicals in your brain. So lifestyle changes first. Let's get the fundamentals right. And don't be afraid of doing some work and don't be afraid of talking about it because I'll tell you right now, <laughs> there's a large percentage of people out there that have their own mental health issues. So there's nothing to be ashamed of at all. Um, don't suffer in silence. Don't like be a, be afraid to talk or disclose any of this with anyone because you, you might be surprised. Someone might be going through exactly the same thing that you're going through and they can help you. They can help you. I, I'm very open about most of my stuff and people go, wow, you know, like I didn't realize that about you. I didn't know that about you. And, you know, I've got my own struggles or my brother's going through this or my brother was an addict or my brother had mental health issues or my sister's going through this or my mum and my father died of alcoholism. You know, everyone's going through their own struggles and their own, you know, this world, this society is set up to mess people up, really. Like, you know, you've got messed up parents raising children and uh, just projecting their, their insecurities and their traumas and you know, their stuff onto their kids and then the kids grow up to do it to the next kids and it passes on through generations and they could see something traumatic. They could have had an abusive partner or an abusive parent or, you know, and they're, they're, or they were suff they suffered abuse themselves and now they're abusive and they don't know why. And, you know, there's there's multiple different things that go on on, the, on this earth because the earth isn't really the nicest place and humans can be victims of that. And also, if you eat suffering, I believe you become suffering. If you eat the products of fear and violence and death, if you eat tortured animals that suffered in, in a hellhole and you consume that on a day-to-day -day basis, you're consuming their cortisol, their fear, their anxiety, everything they went through. You know, This is not going to create a good environment inside of you. So if you're eating meat, dairy, eggs, all of those horrific products and you wonder why you've got mental health problems, you've got anxiety and you're, you're taking in all of this cortisol and this adrenaline from the blood of animals and you know eating suffering and violence i would say that that would be something that i would stop first um you are what you eat and you wonder why there's a bunch of you know anxious just messed up souls out there i mean look at what they're consuming it's they're consuming pure horror and violence so i know i've been making a few posts about mental health lately and I had a feeling. Usually my feelings are pretty spot on. I had a feeling. I thought, I'll, I'll just say this and see if anyone, this will resonate with anyone. And I made a post uh, yesterday and well, it was actually last night. It was like 12 a.m. or something. And I was just like, oh, I can't sleep. I'm going to say this because I felt like giving out some positive energy. And many people are going through some struggles at the moment. Many people are going through some struggles at the moment. And just very varied struggles. And they might have lost a parent. They might have lost, you know, their, their, their companion animal. They might have... Uh, broken up with a partner, they they might just be really going through some struggles and suicidal and depressed, and you know the animals is getting to them, or the you know they, they don't their f friends and family aren't listening to their philosophy on veganism, they feel isolated, alone, and heartbroken. There's many things people go through on a day to day basis. So do I. I don't always voice the things that I'm going through. I go through a, a lot of ups and downs and struggles, and I've been open about those. But I think like when you make a post like that and say, hey, if anyone's, you know, out there that's going through something um, and just uh, just a message of understanding that, hey, you know, I know what you're going through. I've been through stuff myself and I hope you're OK and just stay strong. Those type of things, they can mean the world to someone and that could be the difference between them like, you know, doing something silly or feeling isolated or alone or feeling like there's a glimmer of hope and someone does understand. So I think like we, we should all be supportive of each other. Obviously we all get caught up doing our own thing. I get caught up doing my own thing. Sometimes I'm not as emotionally supportive, supportive as I could be because I'm obviously in activism mode a lot. And I, you know, get to the point where I'm just like, oh, I've got to do this, got to do that. And I'll get stressed out and I'm like, duh, 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 just post, 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 debate, debate, debate. And people might comment and I might be a bit blunt because I'm just so overwhelmed with, I get attacked all the time, every single day. And um, not, um, sometimes I don't stop and go, hey, I wonder how everyone's going emotionally or, you know, let's, let's just stop and smell the roses for a sec and let's just practice a little bit of gratitude for a second here. You know, this is a life that we were gifted and like the, the odds of us getting this opportunity is just like slim to none. Like we, we, we've made it, we've made it, we've got this opportunity to live life on this earth and to sort of share something positive with the earth and help make a difference. And I think, um, 
I get caught up doing activism a lot because that's my purpose and, I, and the animals need it. But I think sometimes we've got to stop and just go, you know, let's just reevaluate things here. How am I feeling? How's everyone else feeling? Are we all okay? You know, we're all on the same sort of boat with each other, and but we can all get stuck in our own paths as well. I want everyone who f- follows me, follows my work to feel like I'm a down-to-earth person who obviously has had their own struggles and I can understand if you're going through your own because I've been at the I've been in literal hell before and you know I I would tell you a story like <clears throat> I say this in my speeches a little bit but um I used to carry a loaded gun to defend myself and I was paranoid and obviously I was in gangs and this is just what you had to do and I had a loaded gun and I was really in a in a place where I was just like you know, I put myself in this, cor- back myself into this, like, corner where, like, I didn't know the way out. And I was just like, and I, I, I had this gun and it, there was one in the chamber and I turned the safety off and put it inside of my mouth. And I was, and I, put, I, I held my finger over the trigger and I was just like, t- f- like, sort of flirting with the idea of just bang, because it's a really, you know, that can, it's just a really impulsive thing you could do, you know, and... I remember that very vividly, and I also remember f- falling asleep after that. But I didn't, I didn't do it. But that's how impulsive an action like that can be when you're going through something hard. But imagine if I had done that. Imagine if I had pulled the trigger then. I would never have had this opportunity right now to help animals and help you guys. You know what I mean? Like, and leave a positive mark on Earth. Imagine that. Imagine if I'd blown my brains out on my girlfriend's roof of her bedroom and that would have been the end of me and everyone would have remembered me for everything I'd done up to that point and I would never have had a chance to change my life around this op- golden opportunity and now, like if I, if I died right now, touch wood, I, I mean, I don't think that's going to happen, but if I died right now, people would remember me for everything I've done up you know, since I've been sober, which would be amazing. And I'd leave a positive legacy behind and pick, pick my videos would be up for the world to see forever, you know, uh, the, the message I want people to see, you know. And so it's all about holding on when you're doing it hard. You, you, if you hold on, you never know what's around the corner. You really don't. You don't know what's around the corner, you, you know. You could be going through the dip right now and you know you got to hold on and then boom something comes around the corner and everything's wow wow i'm so glad i held on right there i mean it might feel like you you just you want to let go you want to give up but i'm telling you right now if i had let go and given up that would have been it that would have been it i would never have had this amazing opportunity now and that's why like i i constantly kiss the ground because i'm like i'm so grateful like i could have been I could have been killed. Um, I could have been killed many times before. Um, I've been. I've had guns in my face. I've been run over, literally run over at you know thirty miles an hour. Just boom, like uh, near death experiences. I've, you know, I've been bashed and you know just put myself in the firing line so much. Um, and my mum always said, "There's someone watching over you, Joey. There's someone watching over you." And and it's like I feel like maybe. You know, so we can get a little bit like, you know, like someone up there had bigger plans for me, you know, like, because otherwise I could have just been another junkie that shot himself in the head or another junkie that got killed in, you know, some type of gang violence or, you know, or just boom, throw away the key, throw away the key, chuck him in jail. But something happened and I got another chance. Okay. And I held on and it's time to capitalize on that. And every single day I kiss the ground in gratitude saying, thank you. Thank you, whoever whatever because i cannot believe what i pulled myself out of that hole that literal hell that mental illness that that voices in my head and the negativity and the demons in my sleep and the nightmares and the, you know and the, the violent people and the environment of deception and no one you can trust no one and always with a pistol or a hammer thinking someone's going to get me or thinking i'm going to prison or um addiction can't can't live without drugs and drinking alcohol to quieten the anxiety and all of this stuff, like, it was so dark. It was so dark, right? Now, I pulled myself out of it and I, I spread the light. It's like I, 
I didn't have room for light to thrive inside of my heart and now there is and all that wants to come out is, you know, light. And I'm not saying that I'm completely okay from what happened in my past. I mean, it's a journey and every, every day I'm, you know, slowly, slowly getting better. I mean, there's obviously some demons inside of me that I'm trying to work through. But from where I was, from where I was, I've come so far. And the reason I'm saying that to everyone is because... You can you can come really far as well, okay. If I can, that you know, I've done a complete one hundred and eighty of my life. If I can get to where I've got with in terms of my mental health, in terms of um, you know, what I do for uh, my purpose every single day, the amount of people that I've inspired, the amount of animals that I've helped, and you know, all of these all of this positive stuff that I put out there now. I mean, not always positive. Sometimes I'm a bit. <laughs> extreme militant vegan activist <laughs> no, I'm joking. but like in terms of like coming from somewhere where you might consider like oh my god this is the end for me I, i've got no way out my life is messed up that's only your your circumstance now that doesn't mean that's going to be your circumstance two years from now look at me i was sitting in a bloody prison cell sitting in a prison cell like oh my god and then you know a year later I'm riding around on my push bike in Thailand, you know, like as a vegan, thinking about how I'm going to change the world. That's how quickly things can turn around. So I guess I want to leave you with a message of hope. Just remember, like, no matter how hard you're doing it right now, that does not mean that in a year from now, you're going to be doing it as hard as you are right now. That That is temporary. That is temporary. Nothing lasts forever, even the really bad stuff and even the really good stuff, okay? We're constantly going through peaks and valleys. It's about holding on through those dips and just waiting for things to, to get better. Make sure you're in a supportive environment. Look after the fundamentals. So sleep, sleep, exercise, really healthy whole foods, cut back on the caffeine, get enough sleep, meditation, speak to a therapist or a professional if you have to, Make sure you're surrounding yourself with supportive people. Make sure you have a purpose day-to-day -day driving you so you've got something to wake up for. And it shouldn't be about you. It should be about giving to others. And that's going to give back to you. That's going to give you a sense of well-being and make you feel like, wow, you've got some real purpose and you're valued. And all of those things, you're going to, be, you're going to do just fine. You're going to do just fine. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. I love you all. Peace.